No, did the wrong thing. Oh, I pasted it though. It's okay. Uh, just let me tweet this real quick. Okay, we're live. Um, Kit, I'm just going to turn the volume on and then we'll be ready to go. Okay, we are going live, shake and bake. Here we are. Hey folks, uh, my name is Nick Taylor. I'm a senior software engineer at Forum. Forum is the software that powers dev. We are back today with another live coding pairing session. And as always, I'm here with Christina Gorton. What's up, Christina? Nothing. Hi, I'm Christina <laughs> Gorton. I'm the open source community manager at uh, Forum. We're laughing because we had um, planned on doing this a little differently like a week ago and then we went back to the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I, yeah, it'll, it'll never be perfect. So I, I was thrown off a little there for a second, but yes, I'm, I'm Christina Gorton and we're very happy to have <laughs> Rafi here with us. Rafi is... Hello. Someone who contributes a lot to our uh, open source community and also joins us a lot on our Twitch streams in the chat. So we are very excited to have Rafi. Uh, Rafi, would you like to talk about yourself for a minute? Hello. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, in the front end developer, like you know, who works mostly in the React ecosystem. So yeah, no, like I'm actually based at Bangalore. And uh, I guess that's it. Uh, yeah, no, uh, That's all yeah, right. th thanks so much for coming on. I know it's it's late for you in Bangalore, so it's much appreciated. Uh, before we get started, I don't know if King Boomy is still around. Is King Boomy still around, Christina? Okay, now, I, now brace yourselves, folks. This is going to be something very cute. Say hello to King Boomy. How old is King Boomy? Only six weeks old. Wow, super tiny and super cute. So it's like the size of a burrito. <laughs> yeah. So if has... anything goes wrong in the stream, just remember that King Boomy was here and uh, we're all good. Yes. So. Cool, cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, as Christina mentioned, we're, we're doing a live coding pairing session with uh, uh, Rafi today. Uh, we did a bunch of these last year. Uh, we did a lot of them during Hacktoberfest. And then we did a few more, but then the holidays came and uh, things kind of got out of whack. So we kickstarted the year. And uh, just to tell you how the streams go in general, we, we have a live coding pairing session like today. The following week, we'll have a walkthrough Wednesday, which is a, a guest from the tech community. Uh, next week, it'll be uh, creator of Dev, co-founder of Forum, Ben Halpern. Um, so yeah, so just all that to say, make sure to subscribe to the Twitch stream because you'll be notified when we go live. Uh, but for the foreseeable future, it's every Wednesday at 6 p.m. UTC. And yeah, so um, I'm going to pull up the issue that uh, you uh, took on there, Rafi. So just let me share my screen for a okay. second here. Not that I have anything sketchy on my desktop, but I just want to find <laughs> Firefox. All right. It's probably the ENB keys. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Uh, we don't need to see Twitter right now, but OK. So. I'm just going to zoom this in a bit. Uh, if you can take a peek on the stream, uh, just to let me know if that's uh, big enough for folks, you think? That's good now, I that's think. If you, yeah, that, okay. that's even better. I'd, I'd stick there. Cool. OK, so uh, for those uh, who may not be aware, uh, Marcy Sutton, who's an accessibility expert, she worked with the forum team uh, near the end of last year for about a month and a half. It was much appreciated. And she did some work in the repository. And part of that work was also creating some issues for some accessibility uh, issues in the site. Um, so the issue we're looking at today, it uh, has to do with the onboarding screen. And it's uh, there's some issues with keyboard navigation and I think also 
Uh, we've got a bit of div soup going on there or divitis, as I've heard some people call it on the Twitters. So we're going to look uh, as well, I think, to clean up some of that to make it more semantic, to give it more meaning. Um, we can go through the, uh, there's pretty much uh, four issues that Marcy brought up. Uh, and then we'll talk about this a bit more uh, once Ra we're going to let Rafi talk because he's already started to work a bit on this PR. But I'm just going to go through the pretty much the four issues that Marcy mentioned. Um, the first one is uh, in the onboarding, there's a code of conduct link and it's currently wrapped in a label that's associated to a checkbox. And when you tab through, you can tab on the checkbox uh, to give it focus and then you can select it. But if you tab again, you it never gives focus to the hyperlink for the terms and conditions. It goes straight to the following checkbox uh, that gets focus. And I can just show you this real quickly, just so we can have some context for everybody. Uh, going on the live site, uh, I won't be saving any of this because I don't really feel like wiping out my profile. But um, <laughs> so I'll zoom this in a bit. OK, so as you can see here, this is the start of the onboarding. Many of you who are dev community members might not remember what this looks like, or it, it's had a huge overhaul like uh, over yeah. the past year. So uh, I, I don't even remember what it was when I signed up like three years ago. So uh, so if I tab yeah. through here, you can see there's a focus uh, style that gets applied and I can check the checkbox. Now, if I click tab again, I'm expecting to go to code of conduct, but you can see right here, it goes to the next checkbox. So that's the first issue that Marcy was talking about. For the second screen, uh, which we'll go to in a sec, there's action buttons to go to the next screen of the onboarding and you can go back. There's a skip and uh, next button. So if you come here, you'll see skip for now and there's a back arrow. Now, part of the issue is once you start tabbing through here, I just tabbed and I've already got the skip for now. Um, I, I understand the reasoning for it potentially because you might not want to fill in the things below, but what this mm -hmm. means is as I come in here and I start selecting things and I'm selecting these with the keyboard right now, I, I know you can't see that, but uh, you see that the skip for now is turned into a continue button. So basically what happens now is I'm still navigating through things here, but if I want to continue, I actually have to backtrack. So I have to shift tab and then I get focus here. There's there's another yeah. issue which is not mentioned, but the color contrast is it's not that obvious when you switch. Uh, we'll probably create a separate issue for that. Yeah. But uh, that's the main issue with this. Uh, so I can continue to the next step, but it's it's not ideal. And from what I can tell too, I, I think, don't this think the arrow same issue also here. exists here. Yeah. yeah, I think I think the same issue also exists here. But, yeah, and so the, the main the reason TV. for that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Rafi. Yeah, yeah. Continue, continue. Yeah, yeah. So the, it's it's like the main navigation up top, and because of the order in the markup, that's why that's getting hit first based on tabbing. Um, so that's another issue. Um, Okay, this one is uh, tag and follow buttons don't have any s uh, semantic information when they get selected and they're all nested in div mm -hmm. elements. So for that one, I'm just gonna open up the dev tools and I'll just show you real quick. So if I come and inspect, okay, uh, that's not right. I'm not inspecting anything. Okay, okay I'm just gonna <laughs> select the button here. Yeah, I'm going to zoom it in there. Right. <laughs> Is that better? Yeah. OK, cool. I'll zoom it in one more time. Um, so you can see here, div, 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 and then we have a button. And so this is the div soup that Marcy's talking about. But the other issue is here, this is a button. And a button is semantic. But the, the problem is, semantically there's nothing to say that that was selected in in the preact component we we have a list of which ones are selected and that gets managed but 
for a screen reader or other uh, accessible uh, accessibility tools, this would not be obvious to that, like a screen reader or to, uh, I guess, maybe voiceover as well. Uh, uh, I'll preface this with, uh, I am not an accessibility expert. <laughs> Mar Marcy is. Um, yeah, so that's the other issue. So we can look at that as well. Um, and uh, I think there was like another issue. Uh, even in that existing uh, the grid, there was also another okay. issue. Uh, it basically has like a list of items. You have like uh, like Swift, SQL, and JavaScript. When you're using like yep. a screen reader, like you won't know like what does those grid mean. Like you just you just read out us yeah. like uh, follow. Okay, gotcha. Uh, we can we can check that out in the accessibility tools after, but uh, I, I think uh, uh, putting in semantic markup in there will definitely help with that. Uh, we'll figure out what we'll do mm -hmm. there once we get there. Um, the uh, the point number five she mentioned, the continue button, this is the same thing as the skip button. It's just the navigation, it's at the top. Um, Okay, and then I think six is kind of a repeat of the, you know, the tab order is messed up because of the navigation. So that's that's kind of the gist of what's going. On. There's a lot of a lot of things to fix in here. Um, I know you started working on this, Rafi. Um, so I think what would be good is uh, maybe provide a little uh, context to what you've done so far or what you've tried, maybe. Um, I don't know if you want yeah. to share your screen or if we can just do it through Visual Studio Code and I can open the files as we go along and it's up, up to you. Yeah. Let me uh, start this little. Okay. Did you want to do it in uh, live share to show me the things or do you want yeah, to go can do it on PR? Big uh, we can actually go through the PR directly, and uh, then we can actually do the live share. Um, okay, because, like, cool. I won't be able to show what is. Yeah. There. Okay. Uh, so basically, uh, yeah. I'm just gonna go to the top so, here. Do. You... It's it's a lot of discussions. So okay. one of the main issue that is there is uh, if you actually look at it, if you go to the actual UI, when you're pressing tab, uh you will be able to like go behind the model if you keep pressing tab enough times like you'll okay. be able to focus things behind the model uh okay, like at some you. point you basically go behind the model and then it'll actually come to the top i mean that's that's a very okay. good i've got a lot of I, i'm on the production site though, so there's a lot of tags oh. um, <laughs> okay uh, <laughs> uh, the other thing i was going to say so, is um Yeah, and I was just gonna say if if you can start your local server, I'll be able to access it through yeah. Live Share, so we can look at that. Yeah, let me actually. Um, but I see what you mean. Let me. Okay, we're at the end here. Uh, okay, tab, 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 tab. Okay, I don't know where I am now, but I'm I'm no longer. I'm outside. So, oh, yeah, I see what you mean. I ended up tabbing somewhere else. Okay. So basically yeah. what I did is uh, there is this uh, focus trap uh, library that is there. Uh, so it will basically create like a fo focus trap. It will basically trap your focus within that model. So whenever you press okay. tab, keep pressing tab within it, it will just go to the end and then it will cycle through you know, the first item in the model. So like your tab will never okay. leave that uh, item. Okay, gotcha. So, okay. So, yeah, like the name implies, it just keeps it folk. It'll just keep cycling through all the focusable elements within it, the parent element. Yeah, that's or, that's or what a the do. container is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, if we actually keep showing. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna see if your local host is running yet. It should. It might ask me for access, but I think li uh, Live Share by default should be able to okay. share your local host. It'll just take a second. Yeah, it's loading up. So uh, for those for those who have never used Live Share, it's a code collaboration Sticking tool. Software. So it's yeah, 
there we go. So it's Visual Studio Code, but there's this extension pack called Live Live Share, and it actually allows you to collaborate with somebody in Visual Studio Code. You can both think of it like Google Docs for like coding, and uh, there's other things available to it. Uh, the, I'm on look. Uh, like you folks can see, I'm on localhost 3000 right now, but that's not my local host. It, the, there's magic going on, proxying somehow to go to Rafi's machine to load it. So I'm, I'm actually on Rafi's machine. So as he makes changes, we will see the changes on here. So um, I'm gonna, I'll log in and you can, you can explain what you were saying there, Rafi. Um, I'll just log yeah. in as the admin because uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, password, type security for local development. Password, password. Um, and then okay. we're just—I'm just, just going to load up the onboarding again, and then we can get back to what you were talking about. Whoops, onboarding. Yeah. And. Oh. Uh, yes. You're not even logging. Uh, should I? No, no, I'm logged in. Uh, start I, chatting. I went to the onboarding. I went to the onboarding after, and it. Uh, I had the wrong okay. URL Without... initially. Okay. Okay. Well, that's the one. Uh, but you were saying uh, while that's loading up, I'll go to the the live site again. Um, you were saying about the onboarding with the focus state. Yeah. So basically, this focus chat uh, library traps the focus within the model. That is uh, okay. one thing. And uh, they, they were like a couple of suggestions uh, like in the PR uh, you know, like when they reviewed it uh, that was there. So okay. as for this uh, follow button that is there, like when you follow yeah. it, depending on the state, you can actually say that you know following Swift or follow Swift, like depending on the, you can put an area label on the button yeah. so that like when you, you know, like when you follow it, it'll say following Swift. And when you're not following it, it'll say like follow Swift. Like as okay. you tap over it. Oh, okay. Like that is what, yeah. Okay, so I, like I'm switching and, uh, state here. Okay. Cool. Okay, so, and you said you're, uh, for, for that focus trapping, you're using a third party component, I think you said? Yeah, I was using uh, something called as React Focus Chat. Uh, okay. Okay, here it is. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, so, okay. So, so it's pretty tiny. All right. Okay. It's, it's yeah, it's it's tiny. Okay, and so uh, like you said, it it basically you. you you set a parent element to be mm -hmm. like the focus trap, I guess. And then from yeah. there, all you can do while that's active is tab through anything that's focusable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, basically that's okay. that's it. Yeah. I think the okay, existing gotcha. PR is actually quite uh, quite big. Like it's 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 doing a lot of things as we like, talked before. It would be nice okay, if, yeah. like, if the PR is actually much, you know, like it does only one thing, and uh, like it would be easier for people to review it, and uh, you know. Like... Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, and yeah. it, this is a it's a, something good to discuss because this is something that uh, could happen with another contributor. It's like uh, it's very easy to do this because you'll be like, okay this is what the issue is and I'm going to fix it. And then you're like, oh, I found this other thing. So I'm just going to fix that too. And although it is helpful to fix all those things, it does make sense to break those things up. So like if you're ever working on a, a pull request and you've, you notice other issues that aren't necessarily related to your pull request, just consider opening up uh, an issue and then it'll get uh, triaged and if it's really a bug, which most likely it is if you've reported it, uh, that's another PR that you can contribute to. And this is for a few things. One, it keeps the work focused on what the actual issue being fixed was supposed to be. And it also, uh, it's it's a lot easier for maintainers or even other contributor, external contributors to the repository to provide feedback in your pull request. Uh, 
you know, if you end up with like a pull request with 60 files or something, it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. kind of intimidating. Like, even if you know what you're doing, you're just like, you see the, you see the number of files in the pull request and you're like, <laughs> Ooh, but, um, th there are, there are exceptions to that, obviously, like so sometimes mm -hmm. it, I think it happens more in front end work, but you know, Sometimes if you have to make CSS changes, they might have to be applied to everywhere and all these markup or Ruby template files in our project. Yeah. But typically when something like that happens, like the issue is pretty much the same thing. And it's kind of like just updated this, 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 and you make it clear in the pull request. Um, but it, it's more like when you've done like a lot of different things in a pull request, it's it's one, like I said before, it's it's not focusing on what that initial issue was, but it, and it's also a brain drain on anybody reviewing it because it's it's kind of daunting. Um, yeah. I mean, like in, each issue doesn't need to correspond to a single pull request, as you said. It can correspond to multiple pull requests. Yeah. Like yeah. Each one yeah, doing exactly. like one even thing, like in the Unix, the Unix way, basically. Yeah. And like we were saying, um, back, I had one question. Yeah. Sure. Go ahead, uh, yes, yeah. Just. Me, me and myself have a question here, uh, not, but um, something I noticed in, cause I do monitor all the stuff in the repo now is that sometimes we're very much like, hey, we're not going to accept a third party kind of thing. At what point do we decide like it's okay? And what point do people contributing can we let them know like, hey, that's okay. Like here, Rafi's using yeah. something that's third party. It's small. I'm guessing that's probably a helpful thing for getting it approved, but uh, yeah. do you have any tips or, or thoughts on that? Yeah, so to, to provide a bit of context to that too, uh, one of the things we pride on with like, well, initially the dev site, but all forum sites is we really want it to be fast. So that means also not loading too much JavaScript. So uh, we'll need to evaluate uh, I, I know what the, from what you've explained to me, it sounds like the focus trap is a, a good candidate for something to bring into the project, but it's something I'll probably just, I'll probably discuss it with the other front ends and stuff. Uh, uh, it's not to say no, we won't, but it, it's like Christina said, you know, um, we, we typically don't need to bring in a lot of packages for a few reasons. One, at least on the front end, uh, the application is primarily a Rails application, so server-side rendered. And we do use Preact uh, in the front end, but it, it's really, it's used sparingly in the sense that we use it where it makes sense to, to add interactiveness to the application. So uh, the onboarding is actually probably one of the, aside from the, the chat area called Connect, uh, the onboarding is probably the biggest chunk of Preact code uh, for a feature. Uh, everything else is typically smaller, like the the search. I added a couple things, but it's it's like it's very tiny. Uh, there's a subscribe button in articles uh, at the bottom there near the discussion area. That's a Preact component that gets rendered after the server renders a subscribe button. So it's 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 not like a uh, depending on people's experience with front end development, but like with a lot of the JavaScript frameworks, you know, you'll, it'll be a single page application. So you'll have typically if you, if you go that route, you know, you're using something like create react app, or I haven't done any view, but there's a view starter, I'm sure, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and you end up typically with an index HTML file that bootstraps like an index .js file or some single JS file. And then your app just kind of grows but in our case we're not a single page application and uh so there's a, there's even other things that we don't have in the application like people might be surprised but we don't use any state management for the front end uh at on the forum code base everything is managed in component state and that's because we literally just have components here 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 so there's no there's no global uh for those familiar with the front end frameworks there's no like main parent or root element that starts everything it's really like each component is the root of that thing so we manage all the state of those things right within the component and it's typically also not really global state anyways it's 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 state related to that whatever that specific component is doing. So, um, I'll, I'll I mean, say, anyway, the state yeah, is stored in yeah. the server. Yeah, like typically, uh, a lot, a lot of the way we 
deliver state is either through JSON payloads, but you'll also notice if if you happen to dig into the code base or if, if you even view the source, if you just right click views view page source, you'll see on uh, several HTML elements, you'll see data attributes, which are uh, standard uh, supported uh, attributes for uh, for markup. Uh, we sometimes use that as a way to load uh, specific user data instead of doing a JSON payload to avoid a second uh, request to the server if it's tiny data. So all that all that to say is we typically don't need a lot of third-party components. There's definitely good reasons to add some like uh, Mm -hmm. We're we're going to be adding. There's a RFC, which is a new process that uh, Chris that that that's me doing a segue for Christina to be able to drop a, a forum post. But um, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting it. <laughs> but we we have this uh, RFC process now, so request for comment on proposing new features and stuff. And one of them is the uh, autocomplete. So if you're familiar with GitHub, you type in at and you'll see somebody's name pop up. Um, that, that functionality exists currently in the Connect, but it's uh, there's some accessibility issues with it and stuff. But that, for example, is a good candidate to look into getting a third-party component because we want to have, there, there's already a few solid ones out there that are completely accessible. So like it doesn't make sense to build that on your own because you're going to run into tons of edge cases and stuff that these third-party components have already handled. So. So uh, yeah, so the that that was my long-winded answer. The short answer is it depends. Um, so uh, it always depends. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, and uh, yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll evaluate if if we're gonna go forward with the focus trap. But I'll have to dig into it a bit more to okay. myself. But for now, like, and this is also the point of doing the pull request. You you've come up with a solution. Yep. It's not to say that it's a bad one at yeah. all. It's just more like this. This is where you have the constructive discussions, and and this is what a yeah. for folks who are new to open source, it's always good if you have questions or you're like saying this is my approach. Put all that information in either the GitHub issue or the pull request because the more information you can get in there, the more helpful feedback you'll get. So. Uh, I wonder cool. if you can, if this focus trap is doable, like without the library using like some weird Zdex thing, like you have like a Zdex that yeah. is really high. Like, yeah. I'm not sure yeah. if it might be, but I'm not sure like how to do it. It might be possible. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, uh, so you know, we'll get some feedback. We'll 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 continue through the pull request here. I mean, there's other ways to. A lot of front end is is smoke and mirrors and delaying the pain of something. So, like for example, the focus trap, if it's currently only used within the onboarding, the onboarding, uh, the way we do this is uh, we use dynamic imports. So, dynamic imports are part of the uh, ECMAScript module specification. So, it allows you to instead of at build time to say, uh, or when when you build the project. It, it, uh, your page there, you're not including that uh, package right away. You you end up doing a dynamic import, which creates a promise. So it says, go load the code for that. So these are, these are and that's how we actually bootstrap the onboarding because initially the onboarding was always getting loaded. But if you, most people have probably already been onboarded. So it was just a waste of, of time and slowing down a page load. So, you know, when the dynamic, uh, when the uh, onboarding loads, it's dynamically loaded. So the focus trap would get dynamically loaded implicitly because of it, it's within there. So, you know, it might not be a big deal. And the focus trap, if it looks pretty solid, we might end up needing it in other places too. So, uh, so we'll see. Um, yeah. So like you were saying, you wanted to break it up. And I think that makes sense too, because... This mm -hmm. is a, a somewhat large issue that Marcy reported and fixing yeah. each of these steps that she mentions. I think, I think even if we do them one at a time and they get merged, you're already adding value to the code base because for example, if you fix the first one already, 
the people can uh, people who are doing the onboarding will be able to actually select the links with the keyboard. Uh, obviously, these two, three, and four points won't be done yet, but you know that way we're we're adding value yeah. each time, and it'll probably get in faster because they're smaller pull requests. So um, cool, cool. Yeah. All right. Well, I, right. I said it, Christina. That's my first cool, cool for today. <laughs> <laughs> I should have a cool, cool counter. I feel like that's yeah. something like Jason Langsdorf would do. Like he has his boops and his yeah. uh, his corgis going by. So yeah. maybe, we, maybe we could have like a Jake Peralta from Brooklyn Nine Nine pop up or for anybody that's seen the show. Yeah, um, oh. cool. All right. So I just said one cool there. Uh, so did you want to <laughs> like you're saying you wanted to break up your pull request that you have going on right now? Did you want to create yeah. the first so, one, which would just be for this the the first? Yes, okay. for the link. Yes. Uh, yeah, I can actually share my screen. Yeah, sure. Share the screen. I mean, I'm just directly selecting this. Uh, yeah. Just to check. I'm just gonna stop my stream and I'll watch yours. Cool. Okay. okay it's just loading up. All right. So. I think this has like some CSS display content. Content. What is the one should be? Okay. It, it's able to focus uh, when it doesn't have display content. I'm not sure okay. what display content does. We could always uh, go to MDN. I'll, I'll be honest, this is the first time I've seen display of type contents. So, yeah, just I've never seen this before. Folks, we're always learning, folks. Always learning. Have you ever, have you ever used the display contents, Christina? Uh, I believe I have, but uh, it's been a while. <laughs> uh, it's always W three schools that shows up first. Uh, oh shit! Yeah, uh, it's they, they have better SEO than MD, MDN. <laughs> they always have. It's been like that for yeah. like I think at least ten years. Uh, okay, so yeah. Okay, so contents. Yeah. Let's see. Wait, there's no display content. There's display inline, display flex. I think if you type in contents um, instead of content, you'll. Yeah, okay. contents. contents. Okay. Yeah. They don't produce okay. a specific box by themselves. They. Okay. Please no. We have no idea what does it mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Defines a content affect unusual elements that aren't rendered purely by CSS box concepts. Okay. Um, what were you okay. going to use this for? Sorry, I missed the part where you were going to use or it not. It was already being support. used here, actually. So like that's why it was not able to focus on the link. So once I don't know, ah. so it was able to focus on the link. Ah, I wonder okay. why that's, that's even there that, that's, that's interesting. by removing yeah. it you said right yeah okay yeah i i would i've honestly never heard of it i've never even seen it oh look today. there's the bug that oh, so yeah, due, due to, to the bug in the browser this will okay. remove the element <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. yeah okay, okay. so <laughs> clear clearly it shouldn't be there uh maybe it does yeah. have other uses but just the fact that it's inaccessible right away, I don't think we can use it. So it's good that you're removing it. Um, so yeah, I think it even though that's anything, yeah. No, it's I don't I don't know if it got off kilter there when you unchecked that or not. Yeah, if it, it got off, it became like uh, you know misaligned. Yeah, uh, that, that we can fix, uh, but display flex, I guess. Yeah, you could probably flex a line. Uh, I think it's justify content. I, I I always mix up the align items and justify content, and it also depends on if you're going row or column. So it's uh, yeah. Hmm. I like always have them. I've had to teach flex and grid many times. So for like a while, I'll have it like memorized. I'm like good, and then I don't do it for a while, and I'm like ah, I gotta look that up again. <laughs> yeah, because if if you make okay. the and make the label uh, display flex. Okay. That didn't seem to work. Uh, the label is already display okay, flex. Uh, okay, be... that is weird. Unless this has like a weird margin at the top. There Looks could like be margins. Uh, some... Go to the computed. If you go to the second tab, we can see what else is. Yeah, there is. There is margins. margins. Okay, yeah. So 
that's <laughs> probably not necessary, but we'll probably need a margin left to give it some buffer yeah. or you can actually put a ampersand and BSP for space or a, just an actual space. Um, we have mm -hmm. utility yeah. functions for the margins. Um, yeah. But yeah. Okay. Well, that's there. Let's go back Let to the code and see. Or are you on the live set? Let oh, me actually. On .dev. Okay. Yeah. Let me actually try to figure out where this file actually is coming from. Um, yeah. Okay. This is the label. So yeah. label looks like label already has a class. And what yeah, is that's okay. We, we can add this? another one. So if you go to the the current label, uh, where's the, yeah, the label at the top there? Okay. Uh, yeah, go on the label. There's some inline style that you added there, but you can add a class name. If you edit the HTML of the label, uh, if you just okay. go up a bit, like six lines and then just right click on the label with the data test ID. Um, that's another thing I'm seeing that we can clean that up. We actually don't need to use the data test ID, but that's a separate thing. Um, yeah. Uh, so, what do you mean by right click here? Like I, if you I go in the dev, you if you go to... in the, if you uh, inspect the the label. Okay. You write. Yeah, like... seen, you're seeing my uh, like browser. You're not seeing my code, right? But actually, switch. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just talking in the code? browser for now, just to uh, the element, so we can. In the okay, okay. Yeah, you have the okay. yeah. Just go right click on the label, edit HTML. There should be if you the context menu. HTML? Yeah. So you can add a class in there. Okay, there's already a class. So you can add, we have there's some utility class. classes. Uh, so we can add an extra class. It would be ML-2, for example, which is margin left with, I forget how much spacing the, the two gives. I think it might be eight pixels, uh, but let's see. Now, if you, if if you I lose- add margin left to like the A tag instead of this one, actually? Oh yeah, sorry, the A tag. Yeah, you're right. Okay. That's my bad. Um, and this this is just just to test it visually, and then we can apply this change in the actual code. Yeah, it, it looks like it has lots yeah. of So maybe ML, ML1, or what might even be better is actually just an actual space because, uh, because it's within the actual label. I think a space might actually be better. So what you okay. can do is, uh, let's see here. I'm going to, I'm going to stop sharing your screen for a sec. I'm going to go into visual studio code so that folks will be able to see what you're doing as well with me. Uh, so give me a awesome. sec here, visual studio code. Here we go. Uh, I am not sharing the right thing. Too many things open. Okay. Let's try that again. And this is the beauty of live streaming. Okay. I wonder how many Chrome tabs can like, uh, like M Mac M1 can actually take. Only one way to find out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, all right. So folks should be able to see my stuff here now. Uh, I'm just gonna undo what I did in there. Okay. Cool. All right. So uh, which file are you in right now? You're in the just let me actually search for that text. Okay. I'm actually in the intro slides. Okay. Uh, intro slides. Slides. Cool. All right. I'm in here too. You see me? Here I can say like hello. I don't actually see you. Oh, I'm in the test file. Sorry. That's my bad. Intro slide it would help if I went into the actual file. Okay, now I see. It. Actually, you can actually click on click on my profile and click on the follow the user. It'll actually jump to my uh, cursor. Where's your profile? You mean on your cursor? At the bottom. At the bottom, you will see my profile. Like uh, when you click on that name, username, like, hey, I can see your cursor. I can see. I see. Cover. Okay, I see. I see you in the chat there of the live share, but that's not what we want to do. Yeah, I always. Wonder, I see your I cousin live share. 
Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's the more the follow cursor. I always thought that was defaulted. Oh, but anyways, not a big deal. Um, yeah. So, uh, so I think in this case here, yeah, adding the space makes the most sense because we want it to be like a space in the text uh, because the mm. the anchor in there is a code of conduct and that's good. Um, but, so if we could, yeah, yeah, that should be good. So that's just JSX putting that there. Um, and then it's getting prettified. Uh, I'm going to share my whole screen actually, because I'm going to need to toggle between the browser and, uh, uh, why is discord telling me, did I enjoy the stream? I'm still on it. Don't kick me off. Uh, I got it too. Yeah. I thought I was like, <laughs> clicked on something. I'm just going to share my whole screen. Screen one. Here we go. There. It's just going to be me. Just to be like, hey, yeah. I'll show you my pug puppy again. All right. So you should be able to see my whole screen now. Okay. So let's go back to what you were working on on the local host. I'm going to load the onboarding again. Not sure why it's taking forever to load your onboarding. Okay, there we go. So, okay, I can already see it looks a lot better. And let's test the focus. No, we should. Uh, re we didn't remove that. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to remove the, I mean, the focus content. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, that was on which CSS I think class? If we. I can actually, like, I was able to focus it. Uh, onboarding model.css there. Yeah. It's, it's okay, yeah. Onboarding, onboarding model. Dot, onboarding hyphen model.scss. I think it is there. Okay. It's, it's, uh, you want to open that file? Yeah, I, I have opened that file. I literally searched for uh, display content in the code, and that, that's the only place it showed up. So yeah, I figured because I think when I'm in live share, I can't. Oh, I can search your files. Cool. Yeah, uh, it's okay. been a while. Okay, yeah, cool. So let's just remove that completely. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not totally. even really sure why that was in there originally, but uh, maybe when we put this pull request up, somebody will say, "Hey." I did that. Looks like of... this thing already has a uh, display flex. I think I just do align items in there or something. Yeah, because you won't uh, just by removing that and just adding the uh, the space, it should be good. But let's go take a peek. Uh, so it should have. I'm not sure if it hot reloads for me when I'm accessing yours or not. I would guess it would, but. Um, okay, so let's try this now. That would be cool. Okay, yeah, I can already see there, there. Okay, so the focus works for the anchor elements now, but the it's it's a little off in terms of alignment. So we still need that space, and uh, probably the label needs a display flex. Or no, it was the margin top. I think you said. Yeah, it was the margin top. Yeah, you're right. It was the margin top. Yeah. So let's see where. Okay, so there's a margin top on. Oh, okay, it's specific to. <laughs> okay, it's putting a margin top on. If if uh, folks have never seen this before, I think it's Hadon Pickering that coined this term, but it's the lobotomized owl here. It's the star plus star element. Um, so what this is saying is, uh, find the label and basically any elements within the label that are mm. side by side, apply the margin top. Uh, so that's why it's doing it for the anchor element. So I don't think this is really necessary because if any other labels that we have uh, have this, uh, like I don't, I don't think, I think it's really just specifically for this area. So I think that whole uh, crayons field greater than star plus star for the, or not for that one, but for the dot onboarding main, like this part here, if you can see my screen. So look for that. Uh, if we come back here, uh, let's see. There's probably only like two of these in the repository, I think, because I know I added one a little while ago, but 
Uh, I've never seen this before. Star, star plus star. So uh, yeah, sorry. I, I should give some more context to that. So when you use star in CSS selectors, star means any kind of element. When you do yeah. plus, uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the way I'm saying this, uh, Christina, but it just means uh, adjacent elements. So this basically no, means any adjacent elements. Any element okay. beside any element is, is what that means. So, okay. and, and the reason why you use something like this is, for example, say you have a list of three items. The first item is not going to have something before it. So this won't apply. So this is like, it's a, it's a nice way to actually apply styling to kind of just the inner parts, you know, so like the, the last and the first elements don't get this applied. Uh, I believe that's, yeah. I believe I'm saying that right. Um, so yeah, is this the one I added or it's, I'm trying to see where we have this right now. I, th I think it is form.scss. I think it's form.scss. Okay. Yeah. So the only thing that's, dangerous it, this is the crayons field though this one we don't want to modify because this will be applied to any crayons field in the application so uh because basically what this creates is, this isn't a sas file right now so for those who might not be used to sas uh this is saying create a css selector that's dot crayons field and then crayons field underscore underscore label which is a uh, BEM convention, which is a type of naming convention. And then it goes further to say, yeah, in this case here, it's saying if it's a crayons field, apply this margin top to any ele elements where the last one is beside it. Um, so I don't think just removing this is wise because it will affect the entire application. Um, yeah. So, uh, but let, let's take a peek again at the, uh, the styles here because it's saying like so there's the crayons field star plus star like I was saying but there's also the dot onboarding main I'm going to look for that in the CSS because that's really where okay so this is you see my cursor now uh, Rafi we're in the onboarding yes. model okay no, so so now in here I'm yeah, just going to look for labeling yeah. here Okay. Okay. I see what he's doing. So this is some uh, SAS magic, but for the label, he's applying the same thing that the crayons field label is doing. So I think uh, if we remove this line here, 610, okay, it's, I'm just going to save it's it. Like, uh, and it. It extends that place. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's think of it as I'm importing the chunk of style that applies to that. Because if we come back to the forms.sass yeah. file here, uh, where was it? Yeah. It's it's hard to tell because of the nesting in the SAS here, but it's saying crayons field label and then greater than star plus star. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that's it's basically importing all the styles from there. Okay. Yeah. So this is interesting. Um, yeah, I think just removing that will work. Um, okay, so I'm gonna save this. I'm just gonna refresh the page here. And let's see if that actually removes the margin top. Just give it a second. There is a bit of a delay because it is going through your computer. And I know you said your your internet's pretty solid too, so. Maybe there's yeah. like, uh, I don't know, maybe there's some like giant sharks eating the internet cable between the ocean. I don't know. Um, okay. So, but uh, shark, sharks, sharks are good for the planet. I'm not dissing sharks. So side note, if you've uh, interested about sharks, there's a good movie. It's, it's a, a little older, but it's called Shark Water. It's a documentary about sharks. So, okay. So recently, to... I basically went down a Wikipedia rabbit hole. I actually found out that uh, there are like a lot of shark movies. There are more than hundreds and hundreds of shark movies. If you actually look at. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not dissing gonna... sharks, TK. 
<laughs> I'm pro shark. Even though I'm scared of them, I am pro shark. I have swam with sharks before. Um, yeah, okay. Why is this not applying? Okay. I'm getting a white page right now. But I'm not getting any errors. Are we all of a sudden using PHP? What's going on here? Uh, can you can you tell in your build if there is anything uh, going on? Uh, uh, actually, no. Undo uh, this for a second. It's fine. Can you actually refresh again? It actually worked for me because there was nothing wrong. Okay, I'm gonna save it and just reapply this. This won't. This will undo the thing I just did, but. I'm just not really sure why the onboarding isn't loading. I feel like I caused some kind of SAS error, but... Uh, hmm. But the compilation is fine, actually. Okay. I guess there's just some delay with the uh, the rendering. But I'm pretty sure that'll do it, because if we... Okay, it seems to be... Lo it's weird. It's, <laughs> it's loading it, because I see the markup here. And then there's nothing. Look what weird. What is going on? It's like I mean we have service workers in the application, so that but that that would normally load a shell, I think. It's like everything is gone. But I mean I see Yeah, the, the service worker so That's really weird. I don't think it's the change I made. Can you check your, well, let me look at the difference yeah. here. So we changed the onboarding modal.sas, but that really shouldn't affect anything. We just added an align item center. Uh, we can actually remove that because we don't need that because it's, uh, is this for the checkbox or what is this for? Yeah, it's for the label. This we don't need because we know it's the margin top. So I'm just going to undo that. But regardless, that's just a CSS change, so that shouldn't affect it. I wonder hmm. what is going on. It's actually producing white page for me to suddenly. Uh, maybe it's the maybe it's the Christmas theme. It's like Blizzard theme. I don't know. I don't know. I I think we accidentally converted the Rails app to a PHP page error. I think that's what happened. Very interesting. Well, well, obviously I'm going to get a white page if you're getting a white page. So maybe yeah. start your server and restart it and just see if there's any yeah. build errors. Cause I, I can't, I can't tell cause I'm not seeing your build. Um, yeah, let me uh, restart my server. Cool. And while you're doing that, I'm just going to go to the live page and I'm just going to explain to folks what we're doing. So, uh, I see Lumjacker just uh, jumped in, I think, recently. So we're working on some accessibility issues here in the onboarding of the forum code base. And one of the issues right now, the main issue that we're looking at right now is you can tab between the checkboxes here and I can select them, they're focusable. But you'll notice that I can't actually uh, give focus to a hyperlink, which normally should be. And we discovered, if we inspect that and look at the con we look at the uh, CSS here you're gonna see there's a display contents in the uh, on the right here I'll zoom that in a bit more um, if we remove this uh, display contents we discovered by going to MDN that this is actually not an accessible uh, uh, feature of CSS there's something wrong with accessibility in regards to this display type so now you're going to see I can focus on them all of a sudden just by removing that. So that's part of what we've done so far. Now we've removed that and all of a sudden you can see that the it, it looks a little out of whack here. There's also a margin top that's being applied here. So if we go back to these, uh, let me let me know when your server is back up, um, Rafi. Yeah, so I'm trying to this, get it back up. Okay. Let uh, me. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you work on that. I'll just keep going through here. So you can see here, I removed the display contents, which is not accessible according to MDN in certain browsers. And it looks like definitely Firefox. Um, and it looks like it was, it was somehow handling the flow of the text 
uh, with the crayons field, which happens to have a margin top, it was somehow removing that margin top or, or compensating for it. So we removed display contents and we don't need this margin top. Now, the thing is, this margin top is being applied to all the crayons fields, but it's also in the onboarding main uh, CSS class when we apply it to the label that has elements that are siblings. Um, and that's where we were kind of were until we got the blank page of doom. Uh, I'm just going to close my sidebar here so people can see stuff. And so there seems to be some, some yeah, sorry, uh, right. error. Yeah, there seems to be some error, but it's, okay. say, some cache error, I think. What you can do is <laughs> it's a cache header, and you're getting the error in the browser or in the, uh, the logs of the server? In the console. In the console. Like, uh, it says, uh, app, it's, let, let me share my screen, actually. Yeah, sure. And while Rafi's doing that, I'll stop sharing for a sec. Yeah, there seems to be this. I'm not sure if this is an actual error. Is it an error? OK, you, you, you're seeing it in the actual logs of the server. Um, yeah. That's weird. Uh, OK, it's, wait, it's getting the service worker. We we have a, we have service worker code that gets rendered from a Ruby template, uh, but it got the service worker. And then if we scroll down, let's take a peek. If you go down further in the logs, uh, processing service worker, and then app controllers concern edge cache. I don't think that's a big deal. It seems because there's no error. It's just reporting that, but. Um, what we can do is yeah. let's go to the, it's got to be server side though, because like if I clear my, cause you're getting the white page as well. Um, Let me restart my Redis just to be sure. I mean, in case it's okay. a Redis at all. Yeah. This is uh, also just a, a good reminder that things never go perfectly when you're actually working on a problem for real. It's not like Instagram where you're like, Hey, I just woke up. <laughs> My hair is perfect, you know? Um, cool. So, okay. So we're just starting up Puma, which is our, our dev server, our web server. We got Redis running there. Okay, so far, getting onboarding. The thing that's weird is, why did it only happen after we changed the SAS file? Uh, Okay, the okay webpacker okay. ran. Okay, I think yeah, we're in better shape, it was working. Maybe. It it worked. It worked. All right, we've. It actually worked. Uh, let. Okay, the live sharing ended. Let me share it again. Okay, I got dissed on live share. I got booted. Well, I still see your yeah. cursor. <laughs> it's just the web server. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it is running. I restarted my Redis and it started working. Hmm, why am why. I getting... I can't access your local host anymore. Is there... I, I shared another link. Uh, you should be able to join. Okay, cool. Hmm. You shared that in the Discord or where? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah. Let me just click on that. Do, do, do. I'm in the wrong Discord. Okay, there we go. Okay, cool, cool. I gotta say, even though we're having these little hiccups, uh, I I still get amazed that you are in Bangalore, India. I'm in Montreal, Canada, and we are doing live code pairing. I still think that's pretty wild. <laughs> and the live, the live share, uh, definitely we're definitely we're not sponsored by Microsoft or anything, but I, I love this tool. It's, it's just really good. All right. So we're back. I mean, in the, so... in... okay. Is it working? Yes. Yeah. I think in the I'm recent, sure. uh, dev, dis, dev discuss podcast, uh, 
I forgot. I, 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 I can't pronounce his name. Uh, is it Shal Shalom Hansen? Like, oh, oh God, I keep butchering his Hanselman. name. Hanselman. Yeah. Scott Hanselman. Yeah, I think yeah, it was yeah, from. Yeah, I think it was there. Yeah, he was actually talking about this uh, live share feature about how we actually it is like better than you know like sharing a screen since you can actually point to stuff that other people okay. do and uh, yeah. I'm not sure why I still can't access your server though. Something happened. Let's see here. I'm just looking in the live share because uh, we're all good in the in the actual editor. That's fine. I can see your uh, I can see your cursor. Yeah, no, it's not that. It's it's I I still can't access your local host anymore. It, uh, oh. Why is that? Can you do Command Shift P? Are you on Mac or Windows? Uh, I'm actually on Linux, but uh, yeah. Okay, or, or Linux, sorry. Uh, do Control Shift P and and type in Live Share in, in VS Code and see if there's like a, because normally by default it shares the browser that you started. Uh, sorry, the web server that you started. Um, and the other thing is you're on you're still on localhost three thousand, right? Yeah. Okay, that's really weird. You know what? Let's see here. I'm just gonna clear everything, get rid of service workers and just wipe stuff. Okay, let's try this again. Nope, no go. Okay, let's see here. Live share, share web server. Ah, it's a good point. Uh, Node Monk mentioned that the VS Code is similar to Figma, but for programming. <laughs> it's yeah, nice yeah, yeah. collaboration tools. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I can share the screen, like if you want, like. Yeah. Yeah, we can the, do that. We'll just we'll just. This do doesn't work. I can share the screen. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. It would help if I shared my screen. Okay. I like your your periodic table of um, HTML elements there, Nick. <laughs> oh, thanks, thanks. I got that Ooh. from uh, I I forget her name. She works at Netlify. Is it is it Leslie? I can't I can't remember her name. One of the front end senior front ends there, or she might be staff engineer. I can't remember. I follow her on Twitter, but uh, she, I saw her tweet oh. about that one day, so I just popped it on my desktop. Okay, so. <laughs> Yeah, so we won't worry about live share for now. So, okay, so you've yeah. got that here. So let's go. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, if you go into your editor. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have to share it though, because. All right. Oh. Yeah. It, just uh, can you share your whole screen? Uh, let me. Yes, please. Yeah. Can you see my I'm whole screen? Yeah, because I'm in your live share, but uh, oh, you you've got Inception going on. It's fine. Uh, we'll uh, deal with this. So okay. yeah, and uh, we were trying to okay. comment out this, right? Uh, is, yeah. Is Which that... file are you in the modal? I think it's. It look for the dot onboarding in that file. Uh, yeah, just look for dot, and then there should be up top. Uh, it's onboarding dash main, I think. Yeah. Uh, there's somewhere. Look for onboarding. Label. Wait. Yeah, instead of searching for dot onboarding. onboarding dash, just look for label, because there's a. In the search up top there, you can just search for label instead. Okay, inside the selected area. You mean want want me to search yeah, for just, label? Just type label. Okay. Yeah. So it's okay, here. So it's, it's here. line yeah. six ten, I believe, is the issue. 
Um, so what's this yeah. doing? What it's doing is it's pulling that CSS styling from the crayons field that we saw in the other file. Okay. And that's what's applying the, like I said, the lobotomized owl, the star plus star. The, if you if you Google yeah. that, Christina, lobotomized owl, you'll, it should be a, a link to hate on Pickering's uh, talk or blog post about that. Okay, so if we come back to the browser and you just refresh, it should be removed once this loads back up. Yeah, I think it's just taking a second to uh, your webpackers just uh, webpacks just recompiling there. Okay, it's all good. Hopefully, no white screen of death. Oh, what? But... Let me refresh again. We've we've converted the site back into a PHP error. <laughs> not not dissing That's PHP, good, huh? by the way. I just remember uh, I haven't done okay. PHP in a while, but WordPress sites uh, you would just make some small error, and then just all of a sudden you just got a blank page that was white. Yeah. I don't think it's your Redis or anything. Uh, yeah, it's pretty weird. Why would it actually throw a white screen? Yeah. Should I really stop should the change. server and start it again? But why did it happen after doing this? Uh, that is pretty weird. <laughs> well, I mean, the Rails uh, asset pipeline will compile it okay. on the fly, but. I still don't know why that would cause the issue. Mm. I mean, unless there's an actual error in the logs here, but I don't see any. You, you can definitely stop yeah, the server and start it again, but. Mm. Hey, it's what's up, Will? Yeah. Well, worst case, if you uh, if you end up getting stuck in a problems, we can jump on my, uh, I I have your branch, or we can start off on the master, which is soon to be main branch for us. I mean, anyway, uh, we, we are starting we are starting off on the master anyway. Yeah. yeah I keep seeing myself. <laughs> Just because I'm not really sure what's going on with uh, with your server, because mm -hmm. I mean. It's not loading some, you're getting 404s there. Like if you look in the network panel, like if you refresh the page again and you just look yeah. at the network tab, like yeah. one, there's the page yeah. stopped loading pretty quickly. It's still, uh, it's, it's still waiting for local hosts. So yeah. As, I'll say just, just for the, just for the sake of the stream, if, if we can probably just jump in we can work out of my code base and obviously yeah, i yeah. want you to get the contribution so what we can do is once we're done the stream sure, sure. uh i can uh i can just basically send you the files which it's a little more old school but doesn't matter and then you can commit them yourselves because uh that's one thing that's not available in live share yet is you can't uh you can't actually uh like if you commit in my code, it's not going to say Rafi committed it just, and I think that's just related to the Git config on my machine. So, okay. So we're going to go back to there. I'll send you a live share. Just a sec. Don't save. Okay. Yep. Okay. I'm not joining your session. What's going on? Okay. Let's load up the forum code base. It actually could be pretty wild if that CSS error was actually the one that is causing this. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, it does recompile because it's a Rails application. So we have the Rails asset pipeline, which when you're in development mode, it will recompile it, but that's kind of weird. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm in the forum browser extension, not forums. Let's go back to forum. Cool. I'll send you a. I'll send you a live share in a second. Okay. These are just uh, Git aliases. I have CO means checkout. So, and G, I wrote 
G short for uh, Git. I even have Y for yarn. So like, I don't know, maybe it's a little oh. extreme, but anyways. Okay, so let's go to master. I'm just gonna pull latest. Like I said, we're actually in the process of moving the branch to be calling it main, but that's another thing. Okay, I'm on there. I'm just gonna run my little refresh script. And while that's loading up, I'm gonna send you a live share. Start a live share. You can see my screen, Christina, or no? Not yet. Okay, I'll share in a sec here. I'm just gonna put in the Discord, Rafi. You can click on this link. And here we go. No technical difficulties with the stream, just some technical difficulties with the server. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's like, <laughs> kick us when we're down. Okay, I'm going to share my whole screen. You know, as someone who used to live code, live teach two hours a day, this is very relatable to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you should be in, Rafi. Cool. Oh, I think I'm in. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to rename the branch. So, new branch. Uh, onboarding. Whoops. Yes, accept onboarding A11Y. All right, now we're in business. Okay, server is almost running. Let me just make sure my local host is running. It's not up yet. Okay, starting up. Cool. Okay, Webpacker, aka Webpack building. Okay, server started. We are back in business, hopefully without a white page on my side, because that would be pretty ominous. Um, do you want to share your screen? Oh, yes, that would be a great idea, Christina. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they can keep looking at our faces, but they probably want to yeah, see yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, or they can look at my, there we go, okay. Let's do this. Okay, full screen, here we go. Okay, you should see my browser now. I think it's going. You know, yep. there's the delay, so <laughs> I can see yeah, your browser. <laughs> the the, uh, the fast banana that that shows up a lot for test data. Uh, okay. Um, but Nick, just real quick. Yeah. You can see your screen, but it's really tiny. It's in the like a shape of like you know, there's the four of us, there's three of us, and then the thing. It's oh, small. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. very small. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got a little flustered with trying to get Rafi's server working. There we go. Okay. No, not yet. <laughs> okay, no, that's good. okay. It's good now. That should be good. You got a little inception there with the uh, Discord, but okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're good. Be... We're good. Okay, cool. <laughs> Back to regular programming. Okay, so I'm just gonna go to the onboarding page, Rafi. Oh, uh, I should log in. Do you need to sign in? Yeah. Just gonna. Log in with the uh, admin forum local. Man, everything is running slow. I wonder if it's the streaming software doing that. Okay, let's go to onboarding and let's actually get some work done again because we had all the good ideas and nobody could see them. Okay, so we're on the page here. Let's go into VS Code. Just gonna hide the terminal and the sidebar so people get some more real estate. And it was on the onboarding uh, SAS file, I think, right? Yeah. Okay, I'll let you go to it. I think it was line 610. Or we can go down. Uh, 
me remove this click on it like oh, is it oh yeah it's an onboarding model sorry yeah so it's here yeah so it's this yeah yeah, yeah so comment that out <laughs> okay and then let's look for that other thing uh display contents was it do you all want to quickly tell everyone again why you while you, why you were trying to get rid of this now that we're back in yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah now that we're back um yeah, yeah. did you want to explain it rafi or If not, uh, I can. Um, yeah, so there's, if we come here, this is, the change has already been applied, but if we go to the actual live site, and you can always actually go to the onboarding, even if you've already registered, but if you come and inspect here, you're gonna see when I highlight this, there's this setting called display contents. And from what we checked on, uh, the MDN website is this is a valid display type, but there's accessibility issues related to it. Uh, specifically, at least what we saw in the documentation was that it doesn't allow you to focus on whatever has that display set. So you can see here, as I tab, I can go between the two check boxes, but I can't actually focus there on the anchors. So if I uncheck this and I come in here, you can see all of a sudden I can tab through them. There's there's some skewing of the text there because we have a margin being applied, but that's what we're fixing as well. So now uh, Rafi's made the changes for this. So if we come here, I think is the contents supplied to this yet? Okay, let's take a peek. Oh, weird, it still has it. Okay. I mean, you probably That's, need to refresh it again, I guess. Uh, it should be okay. I'm going to delete it out of here and then save again. But that is weird. It should be removed at this point. Yeah. Okay. So it's gone now. I don't know why when it was commented, it didn't. But you can see here now that we have that weird margin issue, but things are focusable now. So we're already in a good state. So what we were talking yeah. about uh, was for that margin, right, uh, Rafi? Because like if I inspect here, yeah. it looks like we still have the margin top being applied, applied to the label. So maybe we, because if I remove this, you're going to see it's going to be aligned properly. We need to add a space, but that will do too. Um, but The class we actually commented out uh, didn't uh, remove this thing. Yeah, that's what it looks like. It, it, um, it, yeah. So maybe it's the crayons field, but uh, oh, maybe we need to remove both. Let's try that. If I save that, I found an interesting argument for why people use this apparently for accessibility, <laughs> along with grid oh, yeah. apparently. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna post it in the Twitch channel just so if people have some contents there or context contents. Um, but yeah, the there's something to maybe think about in the future as well. Yeah. yeah of why cool. it might be there. <laughs> okay, so it looks like it, it looks like it's it's good now. So um I'll let you drive here. Uh, but if you look for that uh text you agreed to uphold our uh because we're gonna add that spacing. I think that was in intro slides.jsx if you wanna navigate yeah. to there. Here, I'll go to the file uh, intro slide. Sorry. Actually, if you go there, like I think it actually follow you. Like, you can click on, then click on follow link. Since okay. the source is actually slow for it. Awesome. You should be able to see the file though. Yeah. I'm in the five. Share follow part. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm there. Uh, cool. All right. So yeah. So, so look for that text where it's talking about the onboarding. Uh, this one. Right? Con yeah. Yeah. So you can add a spit. Uh, yeah. Uphold our. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, once. Oh, it was already there. 
Okay. I think yeah, space should be okay. Yes. Well, we can mm -hmm. test this out. We can go see. Uh, so if you just save that, well, and then we come back, this should reload. I mean, if that doesn't work, we can add that one person in FPS. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can do ampersand MBSP, but it's weird that it's not picking it up. Um, just hmm. want to edit this node text to see. Now let's do this. Edit as HTML. That's oh, weird. It's got the two spaces, so it doesn't seem to be a spacing issue. We can try ampersand NBSP for non-breaking white space. I believe that's what it stands for. Uh, so if we come back here, yeah. Okay, and then we'll come back. It should work. Yeah. Okay, so that's weird. I wonder why it didn't take the regular white space. So we'll go with ampersand NBSP though. I think this is better than using the margin because then we're it's like the same spacing as actual spaces in the text that's not in the hyperlink. Um, okay, and you made the change there. Okay, yeah, we've got the live reloading going on. Yeah, it looks okay, good. so yeah. that, yeah, okay, so now let's just test it. I mean, I'm sure it's going to work now, but there, there, there. Okay, and the button's disabled until I select both. Cool. All right, so we're good. Okay, so I think that's one thing. That's perfect. Uh, I know we spent a lot of time on it. We're, get, we're getting close to 2.30, which is usually when we wrap up. So <laughs> um, yeah. I know we uh, I know we got stuck on that server stuff. Uh, it happens. Uh, it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm glad it happened in the sense that like other people, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen for a second. Inception. What? Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Yeah. No, I'm glad it happened because these are the kinds of things that like the the way we have this stream set up when you're doing the live coding pairing is it's it's like I said it's not like Instagram where everything's perfect so it's kind of good that you ran into this problem I still don't know why you were getting that white screen and like what was going on but uh, it, it, oh well I was it's, pretty it's odd pretty good, yeah. but it yeah. it looks like it was related to when we did make the changes to the SAS files. Those are processed by the Rails asset pipeline with sprockets. Um, maybe for whatever reason that was blowing up and that's what was causing the issue. I'm not really sure. But uh, yeah, so we didn't get as far as we wanted to, um, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think that's okay. For this the, one, also, here's yeah. the thing is this, this is a big PR, like we mentioned in the beginning, and it's going to be split out. And I think it's, uh, cool for people to see um, people working on these and how they do it. Like Rafi does a lot in our our repo and he contributes a lot. So if you just even like look for him and GitHub, you can see a lot of the stuff he does. But getting an idea of what you go through to to contribute, I think, is a good thing too. And it's not always you know uh, as easy as I think we hope it will be the first you know at first, yeah, yeah. but. Um, Pushing through, I think Rafi Rafi's gonna break this out and and get in smaller pieces, and I think it's a good thing for people to see that. Yeah, for sure. Like we'll we'll get this PR up today probably, or I know it's late for you, so if not today, yeah. uh, well, yeah. honestly, whenever you're whenever it's convenient for you. Um, but yeah, we'll get that up, and then we can uh, you can definitely keep keep going at the other stuff. Uh, feel free to open PRs for that. You can definitely sync up with me again if you'd like to uh ask questions in the pull requests and in the issue if necessary like we were saying at the beginning that's always helpful awesome. not just for yourself but it's 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 also good because people see the train of thought of what happened to come to the decisions that were made in that pull request so uh, it's just good to to to, uh, to highlight that stuff um cool uh, yeah, like like we were saying, we're we're getting close to two thirty, so I guess I guess we'll wrap it up now. Uh, just wanted to say super thanks for coming on, Rafi. It's like uh, thanks it? for is having like, me. Yeah, is it like mid midnight in Bangalore now? I think. Or it's like yeah, what? it's it's actually midnight. Yeah, it's like yeah, uh, okay. 
Yeah. Get sleep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, uh, Christina's going to drop awesome. uh, links. Uh, so if folks want to give you a follow. Um, yep. I also just wanted to mention, like we said, uh, it's the new year. So we're doing these streams a lot more consistently now going forward. So it's every Wednesday. Uh, today was a live coding pairing session. Next week, it's a walkthrough Wednesday. We're going to be doing one with the creator of dev uh, slash co-founder of Forum, Ben Halpern. And then we'll go on again with another live coding. And then we've got some other interesting guests along the way. I think Jerome Hardaway is joining us after Ben on the walkthrough Wednesday. So give us a subscribe. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next Wednesday, hopefully. And uh, thanks again, Rafi. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you, Rafi. Thank you.